You are watching the third part of my React tutorial series and today we will talk about functional components. Before understanding functional components, let me first start explaining what a component is. Like I've also mentioned in my post, components are independent, reusable blocks of code that divides the UI into smaller pieces. Modern web technologies like Angular, Vue.js and React are all component-based. In a project's folder structure, a component folder would basically look like this in the picture. Each component has its own HTML, CSS and JavaScript files that can be used anywhere that we need in the project. Now, a component-based web page looks like this. Each section of the page is divided into smaller pieces like header, footer, main content, sidebar and so on. All of these parts would be built as separate components and each of them will have their own code as I've mentioned in the previous slide. Okay, that's pretty enough information about components and now let's see how they are used in React. React has two types of components as functional and class. They are also known as stateless and stateful components. Because of the state feature that React provides, the state can be used in class components but not in functional. Unless we use React hooks, which is something newer in React, but that's not a part of this video. A functional component is basically a JavaScript function or an ES6 arrow function that returns a JSX element. I will keep this video shorter and explain the class components in the next video. Now let's jump into code and create our first functional component. Okay, back to our code. I will create a very simple component that returns a static text. Firstly, it's always good to keep your components under a folder. So I create a folder here and name it as components. And we can keep our components under this folder. After that, I am creating our first components file, my first component. You can name the extension as .js or .jsx, both of them are valid. Let's do this as JS. Now the first thing we need to do is to import React because otherwise uh, JavaScript doesn't understand the JS Xcode or other React features. All right, now I give the name of the file my first component. One important thing to mention here is that all components must start with a capital letter. And we can create the component as a normal JavaScript function or as an ES6 arrow function, both of them are valid. And what this functional component will do that, it should return us a JSX element. I can take a P tag, for example, and it should return a static text, my first component. Okay, finally, we need to export our component so that we can use it somewhere else in our project. Okay, our first functional component is now ready. And now let's render it. To do that, I'm going back to app.js folder. I need to call the component here and then it should be able to render itself on the page. Now let's see. Exactly, now we can see that our first functional component has been rendered without any problem. I can even call this component a couple of times. So we can also see that components are reusable. Okay, that's all for functional components. In the next video, we are going to talk about React's class components. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.